Near the end of last year, Anthropic announced Model Context Protocol. It was effectively a standard-based way that AI assistants and agents can plug into other tools and services. So very specifically, let's say you have something like Airbyte, which I use every day to create data pipelines, but I also use something like Claude Desktop. It would be great to have the ability to be with inside Claude Desktop ask particular commands or requirements or check status of maybe a pipeline directly from within inside the tool that I'm using. MCP, Model Context Protocol, allows you to do that. So here's a typical example of maybe a useful tool that MCP could use, especially with inside something like Claude Desktop. I'm inside my Airbyte environment right now looking at the connections that I have created. You'll notice on the right hand side, two of them are enabled and I want to be able to easily see the status of it. I want to be able to perform this from within inside Claude Desktop or any other AI agent tool that I might require, something like Cursor as a good example. Now that we know our basic requirements of our MCP, I want to check the status of my connections in Airbyte, show them inside Claude Desktop. It's time to start building the MCP service itself. Now I have a prompt that I've just entered into Composer. It's giving the simple requirements of what I need to do. I want to be able to pass in a source or no name and get a list of connections that are inside my Airbyte environment. And most importantly, I want to create a MCP server that runs inside Claude. So I also want it to create a Claude desktop config file, which is the configuration file that needs to plug into Claude desktop to be able to use. Now, what I found with experimenting this on a little bit before is there's a few very specific things that I want to tell Cursor to do to generate. In particular, I want it to follow the model context protocol, obviously, but I want to use fast MCP, which is a great framework for creating an MCP server. It takes away a lot of the heavy lifting for you and lets you kind of focus on building it. And then there are some standard things that I know when I'm using Airbytes API. I want to store credentials in an environment file. I also want to make sure that it implements the refresh token and a few general coding approaches that I like to follow when I'm building applications. And then finally, I really want to tell it how to create and configure the Claude desktop JSON file so I know that it works inside Claude. There's a few tricks to working with Claude desktop and one of them is ensuring that your configuration file is correct. Once it's correct, you'll get some debug and I'll show you where you can get that debug. But if it's not configured correctly, you won't see anything and it just won't work. It's very difficult to kind of debug. I've known through experimentation that this is the best way to go. So let's kick that guy off. We'll let it run and generate our code. Great. I'm going to accept these just for now. Okay, Cursor's done a pretty good job of generating 70 or 80% of my code for me. I've gone back in and modified the code to make sure that things work correctly. But as required, I want to make sure that it's refreshing my token, it's getting connection status and streams, all the things that I need. And you'll notice inside my app that's created, it's using the MCP tool annotation. So I know that it's been defined based on the protocol. The other most important thing to getting all of this to work is your Claude desktop file. Now this took a while for me to get right. And now I've figured out the tricks to make sure things work. You can either run something as a web service, either running locally or in the cloud. And then you're obviously gonna be hitting a HTTP endpoint, like something like a webhook similar. Or in my instance, I'm running something locally using UV as my virtual environment for running my Python application. One thing that I've found when you're building locally is you really need to use the exact full path to the requirements. So in particular, I'm using UV as my virtual environment, as I said, so I'm giving it a full path. And then I'm also giving it a full path to the exact Python files that I want to run. Once I have this up and ready and configured, I can then move that over into Claude Desktop to actually start running it. Now this is the most important part of my code right here. I have an annotation that says MCP tool, so I know that it's going to get picked up by the protocol. And then I have a function check Airbyte connection. This is really where I'm doing all of the heavy lifting. So as required, creating the refresh token for Airbyte, pass those keys in my environment, config and configured it earlier. And then all I need to do is call get connections, which is using the Airbyte APIs to return a list of connections and printing those out in a list. Now I want that list to then show up with inside Claude Desktop. That's our next step. Now that I have my Claude desktop config file created, I need to add it inside Claude to ensure that it starts to pick up and recognize it. I just have to go to settings, go to developer, 
and then edit configuration. This will show you where the Claude desktop config lives on your local machine. If you see, if you're on a Mac, it's library application support Claude. You can go in and if you've got an existing service like I have, you can update the file or just double click and open it and paste in the code that we just created. Once you have that done and created, you have to stop and restart Claude. And if everything's working correctly, you'll see this little hammer icon here. Once you have that hammer icon, you can actually go in and see what services are actually there and available. If you see that hammer icon, you're 80% of the way there, which is great. If you don't see it, you have to make sure that your desktop config file is perfectly validated. Now I haven't found an easy way to validate the tool, but if you use the sample in the, the repo that I provide, or even go to some of the getting started guides that I will share in the description, you should be all set. Now, one of the tricks to getting things working with inside Claude Desktop, if your Claude Desktop config file is wrong, you won't see any logs or any debugging. You just have to kind of figure out what is right and what is wrong. Use the example that I showed in the code here, as well as in the GitHub repo. I know that that works, so you'll get that up and running. Once it's up and running, you can actually see what your service is doing from a command line and standard out by looking at the logs. And those logs live in library logs Claude under your home destination. So if I have a look inside my log, I see that I have one here already for MCP service. I can tail this log, or in this instance, I could just look at what's going on. And this is a great way that you can start debugging your service to make sure that it's doing exactly what you want to do. Again, if it's not configured correctly in that Claude desktop config, you won't see any logs. And that's one of the tricky things to get it up and running. Once you have it up and running, and you see that log, much easier to start debugging, okay? Everything is configured in Claude Desktop. Things should be showing up correctly. Now we just have to run and test our application. So I'm back inside Cursor and I'm going to UV run Airbyte status, kick off my service. Once my service is up and running, I can go into Claude Desktop and we should be good. Okay, our local service is up and running, our MCP server is working. We know that. Now all we have to do is add our prompt inside Claude. Now, if this is the first time I'm actually running it, it's going to ask me to authorize and I'll say allow for this chat. It's going to run and execute the commands inside my service, return the results and print them. And there we have it, a running working MCP server that's connecting to Airbyte in Claude. I hope that helps and we'll see you on the next one.